in the last video, we derived the orbital speed of an object as the square root of g, the gravitational constant, the mass of the large uh, object that is that it's orbiting. So it goes around uh, over the size of the over, over the size of the orbit, and we also noted that we can relate things like the period of the orbit, the time it takes for it to go around, by a simple geometry, the circumference over the speed. So, so those things are are related. Um, so, if I happen to know an object, and let's say it takes something like the um, something like the Earth, um, with the Earth, we have a distance that the Earth is of 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. This is the, the distance here uh, between the, the, the Earth and the Sun. And we know that it takes 365 days for the, for the Earth to go around, and we can convert that to seconds. We get about 3.2 times 10 to the 5 seconds. All right. We can then find the mass of the Sun. So we, we, we start off by, by finding the speed. This would be just 2 pi times the radius, 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters, all over 3.2 times 10 to the 5 seconds. Okay, and that, and that turns to about 30,000 meters per second. Then we can say 30,000 meters per second is equal to the square root of you know, 6.7 times 10 to the negative 11 joule per uh, um, kilogram squared and times meter times the mass here of, in this case, the sun, all over 1.5 times 10 to the 11 meters. That's the the the, the r, um, squaring both sides and 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 uh, um, and uh, uh, doing the algebra, we get the mass of the sun at about 2 times 10 to the 30 kilograms. Now, one thing to note is that the mass in this equation is technically not the mass of the center object. It's really the combined mass of both objects. So, but, the, but when you have a tiny object like the Earth orbiting out a massive object of the, of the Sun, it really is a good approximation that this gives you the mass of the Sun. If you happen to have a binary star system with two kind of equal mass stars, you can do exactly the same calculation, um, but it just gives you the combined mass, and if you can kind of know what the ratio is, uh, um, that, then, then you can figure out the mass of the individual uh, ones in that case. If you're dealing with something like a galaxy, and a galaxy from, say, say top down, has a lot of stars and then kind of it thins out a little bit and it may have these spiral arms and imagine that we have our, our our sun somewhere kind of you know out here somewhere and it's orbiting about the center of, of, of the galaxy we can still do the same thing if we know the distance and we know the time that it takes to go around we can do the same uh, um, idea however it gives us the mass of everything in the orbit so it's everything in here, which is also true in this case, where we actually get the mass of everything in the orbit. There's just nothing there. So, so we don't really need to, uh, to do that. So in, in most approximations, you have a tiny object orbiting a massive one. The mass we find is the, is the mass of the big one. Uh, in other cases, you have to be just a little careful uh, about, about which one. Um, which masses we're actually talking about. So this allows us to determine the mass of anything with an orbiting body. It does not have to be natural. It can be a satellite, um, and and it allows us to find the mass of the of, of the of the sun, of the Earth, of of, of Mars, uh, of Jupiter, Saturn, anything with a moon. Uh, and then you know Venus and Mercury, since they don't have moons, we had to send. Uh, our, we couldn't do this calculation until we had an artificial satellite that would go around and that would do it. This is how it's, the masses of binary stars are found. This is the, the way that masses of galaxies are found. This is the method for finding the mass of pretty much every uh, uh, astronomical sort of um, uh, object.